Hi everyone, welcome. This week we're talking about side and stomach lying. I'm Melissa Gerson. I'm the founder and CEO of Tranquilo. I am also a maternity nurse and infant crying specialist. I have about six years of experience in some of the biggest Boston area hospitals. Um, so I have calmed thousands of babies and I have been running this series um, every Thursday at noon um, to give you guys all the tips and tricks that I know of. Um, we've been breaking down the five S's uh, a few weeks ago, we did just kind of an overview. Last week was uh, swaddling, and then this week is side or stomach lying. And in the future, we're going to be breaking down all the other S's. Uh, next week is sucking. Uh, the following week, um, we're actually going to do a combo. We're going to do both swaying and shushing, um, and that's going to be a live demo. Last week, uh, a few of you guys asked for a live demo with a real baby, and we have that lined up for you at the end of this month. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, so before we get started, I just want to make sure everyone can hear me correctly. It looks like Facebook kind of changed their live setup. Um, so if you guys could just give me a like or a heart um, to let me know that you can hear me before I get started with the content today. Um, and if you know anybody who needs to check out this video or needs to know more about um, how to calm their crying baby, has a fussy baby out there, um, this is an interesting trick that a lot of parents don't use. Um, these days, uh, most parents hear back to sleep, back to sleep, Never put your baby on their some their tummy um, unless it's tummy time, etc. Um, and so this week we're going to be talking about side or stomach lying as a way to calm your crying baby. So if you know anybody who needs um, a little bit of extra tips or tricks, um, don't don't forget to share this video with them um, or tag them. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Then again, this week we're talking about side or stomach lying. Um, so. Why does this work? Um, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about mimicking the womb. And so side or stomach lying, why does that make sense? Well, when you think about it, inside the womb, babies are actually usually head down, their chin is to their chest, and their knees are up to their face. So they are in a nice little kind of upside down cannonball um, in the womb. And that chin to chest um, is like something that can really calm them. They that position, uh, they don't have a ton of room, right, um, when they're in there. But they that position is supposed to keep them calm. It's been thousands and thousands of years of them trying to keep calm in the womb or calm enough. I know some of them have little um, crazy parties in there where you feel them kicking and moving. But um, that particular position keeps them pretty calm so that they're not making some really drastic movements or kind of messing with their umbilical cord or tying knots or you know doing anything like that so that particular position when you think about being inside the womb they are actually never back down face up to the ceiling right they're mostly head down tucked um, chin tucked so that's one of the um, reasons why this particular type of S calms, calms crying babies because it's just left over from you know being inside the womb and knowing what that felt like um, even many adults, when you think about it, I don't know about you guys, but has anyone ever wanted to curl up in a fetal position? Maybe some of you fall asleep that way, laying on your side, knees kind of tucked up to your chest, chin down. Um, give me a heart if you know if you fall asleep that way. I'm a side sleeper myself, um, so I really enjoy being kind of in that position. Um, so it's definitely left over. A lot of humans find that calming um, and really helpful. There's also some theories, and this isn't exactly um, fact, so you know, bear with me if I'm you know missing out, um, messing this up because this is a lot of speculation out there. Um, but this might also be left over from being apes. Um, when apes were, when apes carry their babies, their babies are always tummy to tummy, um, and baby is holding on to mom's fur. So the concept might be that when babies are on their tummy or have something pressing up against their tummy, they're supposed to be calm because if they are holding on to mom as mom is walking through. The jungle in the forest then you know they don't they, you don't want them to fall off so they need to stay calm and kind of hold on um, and keep nice and tight to uh, to mom so that's another reason that this particular s might be um, might soothe babies we're not really sure though on that one the other one that is definitely true is that it turns off their moral reflex so the moral reflex is often called the startle reflex um, I don't know if you guys have heard of that if you have um, go ahead and put a heart or a like um, 
um, for that particular, you know, for the moral reflex, it's that startle reflex. You guys might have seen your babies kind of reaching their arms out um, with their legs out. It's actually often when they hear kind of a loud noise or if they experience what they appear to be kind of a jostle or a fall. So um, that's again left over from being apes. Um, and most apes walk on all fours and mom has her belly towards the ground, but baby is tummy to tummy. So baby is on their back in a way. Their back is towards the ground and their face is up and they're tummy to tummy holding on to mom. So if they're, again, mom's walking through the jungle or jumping from tree to tree and baby feels anything, they kind of grab even tighter and they reach their arms out. And that's a reflex. And that's again, left over from being apes. And it's not so much that the reflex, it's not so much that whatever happened, like there's a little, you know, bump or jostle or the noise that scares the baby, but it's more the actual reflex. Um, it's meant to kind of scare baby into grabbing tighter. Um, and when you think about that, that makes sense because you don't want baby to fall off. But um, in this particular instance, when we aren't carrying our babies on our tummies, we're not apes walking through the jungle, um, babies are on their backs and they can have that reflex. And that would be like you and I walking down the street and just kind of like having like this nervous tick. You'd probably be um, just shocked and, you know, weirded out that that happened to you when you're just walking down the street. So it's the actual action of kind of throwing their arms out um, and their legs out in, in this kind of panic um, reflex that is, is what's scaring them, not necessarily the thing that caused the reflex to begin with. So when you turn a baby um, on their side or their stomach so that they, their back is towards the, towards the sky, then they aren't having, um, they can't have that reflex. It's, it's, doesn't exist in that particular position. So that's another reason why side or stomach lying um, works uh, to calm crying babies. So when you also think about it in history, lots and lots and lots of parents um, are were using side or stomach lying um, to carry their babies around. So if you're just joining us again, this is Melissa and we're talking about side or stomach lying as a way to calm your crying baby. Um, so if you know anyone who has a crying baby or a fussy baby or just needs some extra tips or tricks, go ahead and tag them in this video. Don't forget to like this video. Um, let me know that you're here and you're listening. Um, so again, we're talking about kind of the history and why the side or stomach lying works for babies to turn off their crying and to, to activate their calming response. Um, and so in history, many, many, many moms would carry their babies literally in a baby carrier. I mean, I know baby wearing is big these days. Anyone out there baby wearing, go ahead and give me a heart um, to let me know that you wear your baby. So, you know, ancient times, babies um, were often being carried. Uh, so that is, you know, they were always either kind of like, on mom kind of upright or, or like perpendicular um they might have been in like in kind of a um a sling like this and they're they're again kind of on their side or their tummy towards their mom but they were never really on their backs and when when you look at historically how babies were sleeping even if they were put down somewhere, um, they were often put in something that had a curved back. It never had a flat back. So when you think about a crib, it's got a flat, like baby is laying completely flat. But in history, we had things that kind of cushioned baby, um, you know, that, that had like a little sling-like effect so that baby was actually getting back into that chin down, knees up type position. Um, so if any of you guys use a rock and play out there, um, that's probably why your baby loves it because it's, it's putting them, again, it's not a flat surface, it's a rounded surface, it's getting their chin to their chest um, and it's you know kind of bringing their knees up and providing this kind of tight nice little swaddle um, so that's that's another reason why um, that is that this side or stomach line can work for babies so that's kind of the overview of the types of, um, or the reasons why this particular thing works. And of course, as with any of the other S's, um, anytime you're using one of these, you wanna kind of combine them. So we're gonna start off today, I'm gonna show you a bunch of different ways to put your baby on their side or their tummy um, and, and soothe them and kind of turn off that scare reflex, turn off that panic reflex um, and be able to, to soothe them. But again, we're gonna start today with swaddled baby. Again, we have fake baby for you. Um, again, next uh, in two weeks, no, three weeks, excuse me, the end of September, we're going to do um, a joint session and we'll have a um, live baby. So I'll be demoing these, most of these things again as well during that time, um, but we'll also be going over swaying and um, uh, swaying and shushing during that particular live. So 
um, be sure to tune in for that as well. But today we're going to start off swaddled. So that's one of the other S's. Um, we talked about that last week. I showed you guys three or four different swaddles. Um, we have the, the live video up on our page as well from that left. Um, so you guys can check that out as well. Um, but you can always use baby that's swaddled. That's one way to kind of keep baby feeling like they're inside the womb. And then when you have... Um, Sucking, obviously babies like non-nutritive um, sucking. So when they're not feeding or they're not eating, sucking can really help them to stay calm. So you could add that in, maybe give baby a pacifier. Um, we'll be going over it in depth um, in a, in next week's uh, live about sucking and I'll be giving you a ton of tips about that. Um, so that's another one of the S's. So you can add that to your side or stomach line. And then of course, um, we've got the swaying, which is constant motion and the shushing, which is um, constant sound. So that's a nice loud whoosh, whoosh, like baby heard in the womb of mom's heartbeat. So we'll be going over that particular S or those two S's together again with a live demo and baby um, in two weeks, uh, three weeks, excuse me, the end of September. Um, we're going to have some some real live babies crying and fussing and we're going to show you all these techniques. Um, we'll run through a few of the swaddles as well. So don't forget that doing side or stomach line um, isn't just you know a one one time thing. Certainly, some babies are super sensitive, um, and the minute you turn them onto their side or their stomach, they stop crying. But others, um, you know, you're going to need to kind of use this as like a, a, a recipe, and you're going to kind of add the different S's into the mix um, to make sure that they are getting soothed. So. That being said, I'm going to give you um, a few different, I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways to get baby on their side of their tummy, um, and I'll actually kind of go through how um, how to kind of layer in some of these different S's as well. So um, bear with me while I move the camera. Um, so give me one moment here. I'm just going to move the camera back so you guys can see my lap, um, and you can see more of what I'm up to. So um, yeah, just give me one second here, okay guys? All right, I think that was where I had it before. Hopefully, yes. All right, it looks like you guys can see my lap now. Um, so again, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about side or stomach lying. So thank you guys for tuning in. We're going through all the different S's. Um, this is nice swaddled uh, fake baby. I feel like we need a name if you guys have a name for this baby because um, he or she will be appearing with us um, in several of other live videos. Um, so if you guys have a name for baby, feel free to toss that into the comments. Um, the funnier, the better. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about the side or stomach line. So we're starting off with baby swaddled, and I'll go through a bunch of these, and then I'll do them again um, when we uh, I'll unswaddle baby, and I'll show you them again because there's a few different variations. Um, and this is just a, a small smattering of kind of the different kinds of uh, side or stomach line positions that you can use. So the first one, everyone knows the breastfeeding, right? You've got baby and you're breastfeeding, right? A lot of people do this. This is the breastfeeding hold. Many of you knew this from the hospital. One of the, so you could do this, of course, this is maybe another reason why baby likes side or stomach lying is because they are on their side when they're breastfeeding. Um, but you can also do the reverse breastfeeding hold. So in that case, you're going to want to put your hand kind of right on baby's chin here. So you're supporting their head and you just hold baby this way and kind of hold them nice and tight up into your body so that they're nice and secure. And you can actually do a little bit of motion. You could, you know, sway, rock, you could shh right in their ear. So this is the reverse breastfeeding hold. I'm sure a bunch of you know kind of this hold, but this is one of those um, side or stomach lying positions. So um, that's one of them. Pretty simple. Another one is the football hold. So there's multiple variations on the football hold. One of them, um, you would actually literally have baby, um, they're still, you've still got them cradled with your hand up by their chin, but you can turn them more so that their face is facing the ground. So that could be like, like a football or you could do it sideways so that you've got like a football like this and again my hand is here for baby and you're you're kind of holding baby into their side or you could do it kind of again where their face is facing down so this is the this is the football hold and there's you know think about this you're running to you know you see all those those football players kind of cradling um, and again you can add motion to any of these so this is the football um, and these are kind of one-handed so you might actually have another hand free to do something who knew um, being a mom you might actually have a hand free to do something else um, scroll Facebook for for instance um, so th that's two of the holds those are kind of the super basic really simple 
um, holds that I'm sure you you've all heard of or seen or maybe even done um, so if you guys have done these um, before go ahead and give me a like um, or give me your favorite which which of the two you prefer or maybe um, a lot of times um, the, the husbands or the partners will be the ones who like to do the football holds, whereas the the wives are the ones who are more doing the breastfeeding holds. So do you guys have that kind of split in your in your household? Um, so leave us that comment. Let us know what you guys are up to at home or which one of these you like. This is one of my favorite ones here. This one I like to call the tired parent um, because what, ty what parent is not tired? Um, so if you are a tired parent, this is going to be the one for you. Um, this is my go-to almost all the time because it's so simple. So I'm sitting in any um, chair, couch, anything like that. My feet are on the floor. In some cases, you might not be able to see this, but my, my knees are a little bit lower than my hips. Um, so I've got a little bit of kind of a downward slope. Um, it could be just flat. That's fine too. But I like to give it a little bit of a downward slope. And then what I do with baby is I will actually put them right onto my lap and if you, if you want you can um, have it so that their head is turned off to the side so that their cheek is resting on your knee and then this one you can actually add movement by just moving your legs back and forth like how simple is that you don't even have to lift baby you just have your feet right flat on the floor maybe even give a little bit of a pat and a tap this one is just so easy side or stomach lying for or, um, the tired parent out there. So if you guys know any tired parents, um, if you are a tired parent, um, don't forget to tag people who need to watch this video. This particular position is super calming for babies. Add it in with the swaddle and um, you know, a pacifier or some sucking, a little bit of that motion and shushing. I can guarantee you I've worked, like I said, thousands of babies. Maybe one of them didn't like this position. So this is kind of my go-to, super simple, really easy. Again, you can kind of see the motion going on. Um, I'm just moving my legs a little bit side to side. I, of course, you want to have your hands on baby, but I'm not lifting or hulking this big old baby. Um, and it's just super relaxing because your feet are just right flat on the floor and baby is on their side or their tummy. There, I have it currently where the baby's head is pitched a little bit down. You can kind of see that. Um, if you have a really long baby, you don't want their head to ha end up off your knees. So you might need to kind of squish their feet up a little bit. And again, you can turn their head off to one side or the other so that they're able to breathe. So this is my favorite. This I call the tired parent. Um, so I, I love this position completely. Um, one of the other ones, and we're going to go through all these again, if you guys are just tuning in, we're going through the examples of the side or stomach line. Um, so I just did a few and I'm going to do all of them again, but without the swaddle. So you'd be able to see some of the different variations. Um, so one of the other ones that is great is just an over the shoulder. So if you see baby has now got position or got some kind of um, weight on their tummy and their head is kind of literally over your shoulder, they're still supported. And you can actually add movement this way too. Another easy one, but you've got a little bit more uh, weight that you're pulling here this way. Maybe pat the bum. Um, this is going to get you that side or stomach lying so that baby is calm or relaxed. Um, the other um, one that I love is I call it the baby cocktail. Um, it's oh, if you want an arm workout, this one is for you. So again, you're going to put your hand here on baby's chin. You're going to have your hand on their bum and then you kind of mix a cocktail like this. So now they're both kind of, they're not flat on their back. So that's getting you your side or stomach lying. Um, and you're also um, getting some motion. So you're, like I said, you're making a cocktail um, with baby. What mom would want a cocktail right um probably we could all use one of those right about now um so that's one of them um and then the other one that we have um is the um it is kind of the cannonball, which I can't really display when baby is in the swaddle, but I will show you. Um, just imagine baby is in a cannonball type shape um, and you're holding baby kind of knees and chin, chin to their chest and knees tucked up. Um, another one that might be interesting to you guys that you may or may not have ever used was laying baby over a heating pad, like, or a, not a heating pad, excuse me, one of those hot water bottles, um, or if you have those rice, um, what are they called, the rice, 
they're for injuries they're like rice packs or whatnot and you put them in the microwave and kind of heat them up um, some people can use a sock with some rice in it kind of a homemade one those are great um, you might have even seen the meme on the internet where they you fill a glove filled with rice so you've got a little bit of weight um, you can also heat those up again in the microwave always testing it to make sure it's not too warm for baby um, and then you can just lay baby over it um, again face towards the side or um, one side or the other so that they can breathe um, but you're just you know you've got baby in that particular position uh, so that's another one that I absolutely adore um, but it's kind of unique and interesting and of course you're gonna want to make sure that the heat is okay for baby so that was kind of some of the positions. There's several others. If you guys have others that I'm not thinking of, um, please go ahead and share them. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and unswaddle baby now and kind of show you those positions again, and also kind of demo the cannonball position that I could not demo when baby was nicely swaddled. So um, I'm gonna put that over there. Um, so again, this is baby. We had the breastfeeding. Most moms know this holds, but we could use the, the reverse breastfeed. So again, hand here, on their chin and you're like this and you've got baby up against your side up against you so you're holding them this way um, and you've got one hand free like I said to scroll through Facebook um, and enjoy life um, as much as you can of course with a new baby so this is one of those positions you can have the 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 feet out you could also again turn baby downward like this um, this would be could be considered the football hold if you've got baby with their arms down um, or um, if you wanted, you could have baby more like this, or again, you could have them on their side this way in a football hold. Um, so you've got a couple different variations with their arms. You could have just their arms kind of tucked in, um, or you could just have them completely free. But I love this one where they're just actually hanging down kind of completely. Um, this is very relaxing for babies, but it's kind of tiring on your arms. So the tired parent, again, that's my favorite. So if y'all are tired parents or know any tired parents, don't forget to tag people to watch this video. Um, so this one, again you can kind of, you can see my lap here you just put your feet on the floor I specifically have a little bit of an, an angle down so baby's head is going to be um, below their bum so they're more kind of like this on my lap but you could do it flat as well and in this case you just lay baby right down on your lap again you don't want baby's head to hang off your knees um, so you might need to kind of squish up their feet um, and then you've got baby in your lap and then you turn this baby doesn't their head doesn't turn very well but you turn their their head off to one side so that they can breathe and then you've got some motion going on here so they are on their belly and you are soothing them, giving them a little bit of rocking motion. Um, so if you guys are um, just checking us out, this is side or stomach lying, and it's a way to calm crying babies because it's mimicking um, what they experienced in the womb, which was having their chin to their chest or having some kind of um, knees to their chest, some kind of pressure on their stomach, um, probably left over from being um, apes as well and how, how um, monkeys carried their babies through the jungle. So um, that's what we're talking about. And this is my favorite. I call the tired parent so um, again this is just super easy thousands of babies that I've sued they all love this one you're tired you're exhausted you've got one hand on baby you've still got that other hand free to scroll through Facebook um, or take a drink of water or whatever and baby is just out like a light they've got the motion it gets them super drowsy and it's just super easy conserving energy for you so if you like that one um, go ahead and give me a heart and let me know that you enjoyed that one um, and then um, they, we also had the um, over the shoulder, which was again this one where baby it has their head over your shoulder so they've got something against their tummy and you can add some motion here their head is supported you can um, you know you can add the motion and this is getting your side or your stomach lying position as well um, the other one that we talked about was the cannonball which I couldn't do with baby swaddled but you want to bring baby up into like a cannonball position and then you can either have them kind of in your lap or you could have them um, you know you could just be holding them in this kind of position this cannonball position um, so this one is an interesting one can help with gas um, actually any of these tummy um, the tummy ones the ones where there's pressure on the tummy the tired parent over the shoulder can be super helpful if you've got a gassy baby um, which might be why they're fussy so 
um, feel free to use that. And then, um, the other one that I was mentioning was the, um, baby cocktail, which, um, I, I think is just a funny term, but again, put your hand here on baby and then you are just holding baby with your other hand on their bum or their bottom. And you're giving a little bit of motion this way, but they are not flat on their back because being flat on their back can startle them and scare them. Um, and really, um, just kind of, you know, it, it's it's why oftentimes they can cry and some babies it changes their their sensory perception of the world so it activates when you're turning them on their side or their tummy it's activating um, those positioning sensors and it's letting them know um, that they are safe that this moral reflex that there's no panic they're not gonna fall from you know from mommy as mommy's jumping through the jungle when we were monkeys um, so that's that's the reason why this particular position works now most importantly, and I want this to be very clear, and I probably should have said this like a million times up front, but um, one of the things that so many parents hear is back to sleep, back to sleep, back to sleep. And that's all related to SIDS, um, and that's related to safety. So when it comes to SIDS, babies, um, the, the American Academy, the Academy of American Pediatrics in, I believe it was like 1992, came up with information um, that, that babies were dying of sudden infant death syndrome in a crib and they didn't know why. So they ran some studies and they found that babies who had teen mothers who hadn't received prenatal care, whose mothers were smokers, who had so were sleeping on soft, cushy things, uh, you know, in their crib. They had maybe blankets or other things that were kind of free in their crib. Um, if they were sleeping on their stomachs in their crib, especially if they were on some kind of soft surface, um, all of this was leading to this kind of sudden infant death syndrome. Um, and they determined that babies should never, ever, ever sleep on their, even on their sides, they determined this because probably babies were rolling over onto their stomachs while they were sleeping. They determined that most babies under a month, it's super rare for SIDS to occur, um, but babies two to four months right before they're learning how to actually roll and roll um, over in their sleep or roll over kind of during the daytime is is that kind of peak time for a SIDS um, occurrence so in that particular case they were really recommending not to put their to put babies on their sides or their stomachs and they have drilled into everyone now for the oh my god that's what 25 years 92 oh that makes me feel old but um so yeah, 25 years uh, that we should only let babies sleep on their backs um, so Yes, that is completely true. I agree with that 100%, but you can use these positions if you've got baby, if you are attentive to baby, if you've got, let's say you've got one hand on baby, baby's even in their crib, um, or you know, you're know you holding baby, you are with baby, you can feel baby breathing, there is no problem, no issue with baby um, having, you know, being on their side or their tummy. So that is kind of a very important safety tip that anytime baby is unattended, so when you think about leaving your baby in the bathtub. Nobody would ever do that, right? But if you've got your hand on your baby in the bathtub, you can bathe your baby and you've got your attention there. You should never turn your back. Same thing with this. As long as you've got your attention, you've got one hand, you can feel baby up against you. It is no problem to have a baby on their side or their tummy. And think about it as babies get older, how many pediatricians are telling you tummy time, tummy time, tummy time, tummy time. So you always do tummy time when they, you know, are awake and alert and attentive. So same thing, and you're with them the whole time um, that that's happening. So um, that is one of the safety pieces of this, that you can utilize these techniques even though they say back to sleep, back to sleep, back to sleep. And baby can sleep in these positions if, 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 and only if you are holding them, you're attentive to them, you've got one hand on them, you can feel them breathing. So I wanna be very, very clear about that from the safety perspective, because as a nurse, safety is key. One of the other things that you'll know or you'll remember is when you were in the hospital, a lot of times they had you do skin to skin. So you'd be in the hospital, you'd be kind of semi-reclined like this and baby would be skin to skin like this, right? Um, think about it, that is being on their tummy. And how many nurses and how many doctors and pediatricians told you in the hospital, skin to skin is great, skin to skin is great, skin to skin is great, and they advocated you doing that. Um, so if, that, if that's true, that's the same thing, they're on their they're on their tummy um, but you are checking in with them and seeing what they're doing and seeing what they're up to um, and feeling them breathe so it's fine for them to be in that position so again only if baby is unattended 
sleeping in a crib, a bassinet, any kind of um, surface where they're sleeping alone and no adult is watching them, keen watching, have a hand on them, then they should be on their backs. So that is very much a safety thing and I want to be very, very clear about that um, because safety is of the utmost importance. Um, yeah, so safety is key, key, key number one um, to that. So. Um, I'm actually going to move this camera in a little bit closer because we're moving in towards the Q&A time and I cannot see, I cannot read what's going on over there. Um, so if you guys have been liking or leaving comments, I apologize, I cannot see them. Um, but I'm going to bring, bring you guys a little bit closer um, and kind of finish up the content here and then we'll be talking about, um, oh, here we go, um, and then we'll be talking about... Um, the, you know, the, the Q and A. So, so if you guys have questions, get those ready. Um, we're almost ready for that. Um, so before I finish to the Q and A portion, I do want to kind of, um, address a few questions, um, that often do come up. They're kind of the most common questions. Um, so I can kind of give you those up front. And then if we have any additional questions, um, we'll, we can go from there. So, um, will a baby's arm fall asleep when they're on their side? No. <laughs> so um, when you think about that, all the positions that I showed you today is baby is on a firm, but it's it's squishy. Like your body, um, your arms, your legs, you know, over your shoulder is a little bit squishy. There's movement. There's something, you know, they've got a little bit of jiggle room or wiggle room. Even in a swaddle, baby's got some room. You would never put baby on like a hardwood floor um, on their side or, you know, even crib mattresses do have a little bit of squish to them. So those are soft enough. Those are not going to provide enough firm, hard pressure um, that could cause issues with something laying on a nerve. Um, that's what causes that pain. Also think about it, babies are nice and pudgy and chunky, um, so it's a lot more difficult for them to have issues as opposed to kind of bony adults um, where you might have something kind of laying or resting on a nerve. Um, you know, if you've got your arm on a work table or something like that, it can cause your arm to go to sleep. Um, so babies' arms do not fall asleep when they're in their side or they're, um, when they're on their side, so don't worry about that in any way. Um, one of the other, um, common questions that we get from parents is, um, you know, if baby was upside down in the womb, why don't we put them upside down now? So, you know, I showed you a bunch of positions, but they were all side or, you know, on their tummies. But, you know, if they were in the womb, again, chin to chest, knees upward like this, and they were upside down, shouldn't we put babies in this position? No. <laughs> um, and it's, it's a good, it's a good th concept and a good thought and, you know, certainly good logic that you're using there. However, when you think about being in the womb, babies are suspended in amniotic fluid. So they are floating in a bath and that's all they feel. That's all that they, it's almost like this weightless environment being inside the womb in the amniotic fluid. And when they're born, that goes away. So they now have gravity for the first time that they're probably experiencing and feeling. And when you've got gravity, um, when you're not just suspended in this nice amniotic fluid, you have got a lot more pull and tug and, you know, head can, uh, excuse me, blood can rush to their head. And it's just this odd sensation that they're not used to. Um, if you could recreate a weightless water environment, um, they would probably love it and you could put them upside down, but that does not exist. So don't try that. Do not try that at home. Um, don't try to get fresh with me and try to do that in the bathtub with your baby. Um, so yeah, so you, that is, um, that is not a position that works. Um, but the, again, when they're in the womb, they've got their chin to their chest, knees up, um, and they've got something, their knees usually kind of weighted up against their chest, um, or up against their tummy. And so that is why tummy, um, or side lying is really, really helpful. So, um, that is, you know, the reason why we're talking about all of this today. So, um, yeah. And the other question that we get a lot is, or I get, I've gotten a lot is like, where do you put baby's arm if they're on their side? Like, you know, adults kind of sleep like this. Do you put their arm up? Do you put their arm at their side? Do you let their arm be here? How, where do you put their arm? Um, so just a great position is actually just right at their side. Again, um, you're going to be placing them either on a mattress or you're going to be holding them. Um, and there's plenty of wiggle room. Their arm's not going to fall asleep. There's not going to be any issues um, with that. So um, those those are kind of the common questions. You can just put baby's arm down by their side. Um, and if you tuned in last week, we, we I showed you how with swaddling you can actually, because a lot of babies keep their arms up here, you can get baby's arm down by their side. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the content that I had prepared for you guys today. Um, if you guys had any questions, I would love for you um, to, to, you know, 
think of them. Um, put them in here. Let us know what you're thinking about. You know, let, let me know if you have any other questions. Maybe you have a question on swaddling that we talked about last week. Um, maybe you have a question on um, sucking that we're going to cover next week um, or, or the swaying or the motion or the shushing. Uh, so if you have any questions, please, please, please leave them here. Um, we're going to be, um, I'll be answering any of your questions that you have. And then specifically um, next week, you want to tune in next week at noontime, we're going to be talking about sucking. Um, so we all know that babies breastfeed or bottle feed, but even when they're not eating, sucking can be really soothing for them. So I'm going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks um, so that when baby isn't hungry or isn't eating, that you can use sucking even if you are not using a pacifier. So um, if you're kind of one of those breastfeeding moms and you're staying away from it for a while, I will go through um, some tips and tricks for that next week. So be sure to tune in 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next week um, and share with your friends. Let them know what we're talking about. And then the, um, you're definitely not going to want to miss, I believe it's like the 20, 20th or 21st. Um, it's a Thursday. Every Thursday at noon we're doing um, these Facebook Lives and we're going to be having a, um, a guest on. I'm actually out of town and I won't be able to do this, but we're going to, it's the, I think we're going to be having a doula on. So if anyone had a doula out there for their delivery or had a postpartum doula, um, or you're thinking about getting a doula, you're pregnant, you're not sure, um, you'll want to tune in. They're going to have a bunch of great content for you, um, but that's kind of still being planned. So um, if you have any suggestions for what we should, what that doula should talk about or what I should talk about in future weeks, um, you know, feel free to share it and comment here. Uh, yeah, and again, the, the last week in September, the 28th, we're going to be doing a demo that's it's going to live, but we're going to have live babies. So we're going to be showing you swaying and the shushing, the other two S's, but in live action time. And we'll kind of go through some of the other S's um, that's helpful to see these different maybe positions we talked about today, but in a live setting with a real life baby who's squirming and moving, or we'll go through some of the swaddle uh, the swaddles types that I showed you as well. So be sure to tune in for all of those. Um, so yeah, any other questions? I'm I'm not sure if my feed is just um, missing on the, you know, missing up the questions or if, if I'm like slow again, it looks like Facebook kind of changed their feed. Um, so I'm not, I don't see um, anyone having any questions, which is fine. Maybe I did a great job of explaining the content. Um, so it's not a problem, but you know, just if you have any questions, I'm going to give you guys a few more minutes um, to, to put them here. Anyone want to chime in on where they're tuning in from and what they're, you know, what they're doing, what they're up to, how old their baby is, anything? Again, I'm worried that my screen is totally frozen. I hope you all can hear me. Um, I haven't heard from anyone recently, so hopefully you're still hearing me and this is recording. Um, again, we were talking about side or stomach lying this week, and this is the Q&A portion. Maybe I just, maybe I got all of your questions when I answered those three or four questions just before now, so. Um, oh, we've got Kristen tuning in from New York. Hi, Kristen. Um, anyone else out there um, that is tuning in? Looks like my feed is working, but maybe there just aren't any questions. We'll give you guys another minute or so if you can think of any questions. Otherwise, um, I'll be signing off and letting you get to actually practicing this with your babes. Um, so yeah, so we went through all the side and stomach lying. Again, going through the reasons why that works, kind of the history behind it. Um, We've got somebody from Champlain. I don't know where and I don't know what state that's in. Champlain, um, and we've got somebody from Massachusetts and a Cambridge person. So they're close by. We're located in Boston. So hi, Alex. Nice to uh, nice to talk to you guys here today. Thank you for joining. Um, but yeah, so it sounds it seems like nobody has any questions. Um, but thank you all for tuning in again. Don't forget to tune in every Thursday at noontime. We're going to be going through the other S's and then we're going to have additional content um, throughout the time. So next week is sucking. Um, you can watch some of our previous videos and then next week we're going to be we're going to be talking about sucking a little bit of breastfeeding, bottle feeding, pacifiers and some other tips and tricks um, to calm baby using the sucking reflex that they have. So thank you all for tuning in and it was uh, it was a pleasure and if you guys have any questions that you think of afterwards feel free to add those and we'll be checking the comments um, even after. So if you're watching this video later feel free to still chime in and you know add comments or tag friends um, so that we can answer any other questions. So thanks again guys and have a great day. Bye.